Good evening. Happy Tuesday. How are you doing? I just see five in the meeting now. Roberto, Carlos, Carla, Carla, Daniela, and Mario. Welcome to the class. Thank you for being on time. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for being so nice and responsible students. <laughs> I hope that you have had a good day today. How was it? It was a good day. A good I day. saw a lot. I saw a lot. So it was a good day. Okay. A good day for sales. Yes. Nice. And how about you? Oh, it's been really good because, well, um, I just went out for a couple of hours, but the traffic was okay. Weird. Okay. It's not normal. <laughs> so I'm too scared. Okay. <laughs> just of the yes, people is like in vacation mode. So probably. <laughs> Creo que todos estamos así. <laughs> yes. We are. So, any plans for vacations? Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to travel to La Union. Travel to La Union? Oh, yeah. wow. I'm going to go with my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with my boyfriend in the motorcycle. So, it will be a hard trip. But it's okay, don't worry. I'm gonna visit the I'm gonna visit my grandfather. Oh and I will go to the beach. Oh it's the best part of my vacation. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a good plan and nice that you're going to spend time with your family. And uh, yes. I, I guess that you will try the traditional food, right? Like tortita de pescado. Ay, sí, me encantan. Ya me enseñaron yeah. la evidencia de que ya están en planes de comprar para cocinármelas, así que estoy feliz. Um, yeah, I like them, but the way they do it in Oriente. Those I like them. Con, con su caldito. Like the ones y con... Salvador, yes. Yeah, no, the ones that they made here in San Salvador, I, I don't like them. <laughs> no, me, me either, teacher. Yeah, Solo la gente de la zona sabe cómo le da sí, su sabor. Y de oriente con su, ajá, porque las envuelven en masa. They, they are totally ajá. different and very delicious. Ajá, la masita y un su caldito con repollo y verduras así. Oh y elotitos chiquitos. Ay, y eso que acabo de cenar ya me dio hambre. <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay, nice plans. And the rest of you, do you have any plans for vacation? Probably you do, but you don't want to share now. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to begin the class with, uh, well, yesterday we were discussing and um, talking about daily activities, activities at the workplace, uh, things that we normally do. So we're going to continue reviewing the simple present and today is our class number nine let's check um the yesterday's homework i hope that you have it completed but okay i one second i'm going to share my screen and it's Still loading. Okay. I think that you can see it now. So uh, this is the homework number eight that it was supposed to be done, but let us check it together. So in this, as uh, we have been studying and reviewing the simple present, this is the same thing that we're going to be doing. So um, in here, we need to choose the correct form of the verb in present to complete the space in blank. So in number one, let's read the sentence. We have Jeff from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. and we have two options, work and works. 
Which one is correct? Any volunteer? Uh, works. Works. Okay, excellent. Yes, because it's third person affirmative sentence. Third person in singular affirmative sentence. Okay, let's see number two. We have Jane and Pete the tables every day. Would that be cleans or clean? Clean. Clean. Excellent. Yes, the option is clean. Because it is plural, it's Jane and Pete. So it's not third person singular, it's a plural, because it's two persons. So very good, excellent. Number three, Mark orders on Wednesdays. Don't take or doesn't take. Which are the two options? Doesn't take. Doesn't take. All right. Now it says uh, a restaurant from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. What would that be? Opens or open? Opens. Opens. Open or opens? Opens. Opens. Uh -huh. Opens, because we are referring to the place, the restaurant. Yes. So it's a thing in singular, a singular thing. So yes, opens. A restaurant opens from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And the last one is our boss, much time in the restaurant. Would that be spends or spend? Spends. Yes, because we are talking about this person, our boss, a singular, and this is a possessive, so yes. And excellent. Yes, your answers were correct. So I hope that everybody is on the same page. And probably if you are uh, up ahead, that's okay. Si van adelantados, es mejor todavía. Eh, so para mañana te estaríamos en la clase número 10. Significa que tenemos que tener terminadas la sección 1. Y dos en la plataforma como mínimo. Tenemos que tener todas estas tareas completas como mínimo las dos secciones primeras. Si ustedes pueden ir adelante, mucho que mejor. Eh, acuérdense, el límite es a medianoche. That's the deadline. And uh, let's see. What else? Well, that would be it with this exercise. So we continue with our topic for today, which is the simple present review. So I'm going to share my screen again. And let's see. Uh, Teacher. Well, yes. Y el midterm para cuando es. El Bien, midterm. También para mañana. Hay que yes. Mm -hmm. For tomorrow okay. as well. Sí, okay. para mañana también. Qué bien que lo recordó. Sí, después de la sección 2 es el midterm exam, así que también tendría que estar eh, completo. Gracias por recordarlo, yo no me acordaba de eso. Ok, <laughs> yeah. thank you, teacher. Yeah, I stopped teaching like for three months, so I'm a little lost today. <laughs> Todavía estoy un poquito perdida, yeah. but... Um, teacher, yeah, ahora la las dos. Hola. Hola. Yes. Hola, hola. No es ahora, la, no es ahora las dos. No, la, el, el, la tiempo límite para que tengan completo, permítame, no, porque hoy es la clase número 9, la clase 10 mañana. es... Mañana. Sí, mañana a medianoche sería como límite eh, para que tengan completo eh, la sección 1, sección 2 y el midterm, que es el que viene después de la sección 2. Así es que avancen en eso y ya saben si se encuentran con algún problema, algún ejercicio que no que no les esté agarrando la respuesta o que no sepan cómo hacerlo, pueden pedir ayuda en el grupo de WhatsApp. ¿Ok? Ok. Ok, ¿any other question? Y se dice fecha límite, pero sí, es hasta medianoche, traten de tenerlo así, porque si no, lo pueden hacer después, claro, pero eh, acuérdense que los gestores están auditando constantemente y pueden tomarlo como un abandono, ¿verdad? El que no vean los ejercicios eh, con avance. So, 
para evitar eso, mejor pues hacerlo uh, como debe de ser. Eh, en el tiempo que, que se ha estipulado, ¿verdad? Para no tener ningún tipo de inconveniente después. Ok, ¿is there any other question? Ok, if there are no more questions, uh, we have this exercise that was um, in page, it is on page 24, and it says to prepare a mini presentation about the schedule activities of four or five employees to at your workplace and we have to create a timetable similar to the one in part three page 23 and then we will share the presentation but um this is like okay if i think if we were working in the same company probably it would be easy to understand that, right so we're going to do something similar But uh, later, vamos a hacer algo similar, pero luego, para no, uh, porque no, no tiene como hacer una presentación de a uh, cuatro o cinco empleados del lugar de mi trabajo. Ustedes no, no los conocen, no trabajamos en el mismo lugar. So, like, vamos a hacerlo un poquito diferente más adelante, algo similar. Uh, siempre con time, vamos a hacerlo con los tiempos. Y vamos a hacer algo similar, pero más adelantito, casi al final de la clase. So, uh, eso solo para, verdad, hacerles saber. And yes, like for uh, getting a little bit more practice about this, because we are talking about activities at the workplace and things that people normally do in a regular day, we have this exercise, like examples, so that we can get ideas and also vocabulary. Uh, and we have this short reading uh, paragraph about Kelly Smith, and we have it here. I'm going to read this one, and then you tell me if you find any new word of vocabulary. Well, I almost always get up very early, at about 5.30. I get up early because I like to go jogging along the beach and watch the sunrise. Later, after breakfast, I go to work. I work in a bank near my home. I don't drive to work. I take a bus. It takes only about 20 minutes to get to work. After work, I like to go to my favorite bakery and buy some fresh bread. I get home between 5 o'clock and 5.30. My husband, Michael, usually makes dinner because he loves to cook. In fact, he's a chef in a restaurant. His hobby is painting, and my hobby is growing flowers in our garden. We also have a pet dog called Wolfie. In the evenings, we take Wolfie for a walk and then get to bed by 9.30 because we have to get up so early again the next morning. And that was the reading about Kelly's, uh, uh, a normal or regular day at Kelly's life. Is there any question about the vocabulary or pronunciation? No, teacher, no. No questions? New vocabulary? No. Oh, Cristina, did you say something? Jogging. Uh, Jogging. Sí, como se ve, so, es yo, jogging. Como se escribe con J, ¿verdad? Por donde estaba, jogging, okay. jogging, jogging. Sí. Mm -hmm. And you know the meaning of that word? ¿Sabemos qué es jogging? Es como estar tirado en el suelo. Um, como, como recostarse en el, en el suelo, algo así. Oh, this one, jogging. No sé cómo explicarlo. Uh -huh. uh, it says, I like to go jogging along the beach. And jogging is like um, trotan, trotar. Oy. 
Ah, Ay. es trotar. Ajá, uh -huh. no es correr. Correr es run, caminar, walk. But this is this like in between, right? <laughs> no walk, no run, jog, jogging. Eso es trotar. Any other new word? Oh, for example, this one is just growing flowers. Uh -huh. As plantar flores, growing flowers. Okay, now, uh, now we have these two questions. Why does Kelly get up early? Is her workplace far from home? I'll give you some time for you to read the uh, the article again, and you can answer these two questions in your notebook, and then we're going to share your answers.
Have you finished? Have you finished or you need more time? I finish. Okay. Can you share the answer for the first one? Why does Kelly get up early? Um, she likes joining alone on the beach and watch the service. Yes, excellent, Hazel. Thank you so much for your answer. Yes, she gets up early because she likes um, jogging, to go jogging and watch the sunrise. Okay, so I guess that she does it before she works, right? Yes, that's it. So thank you so much. Excellent. Now, number two, a volunteer. Is her workplace far from home? Is her workplace far from home? Eh, no sé si, si lo redacté bien, teacher. Eh, no, she works near her home. Yes, that's good. No, she works near her house or her home. Yes. So, yes, puede ser así. No. She works, uh, está bien, o algo otra opción puede ser no, it isn't, refiriéndose al lugar de trabajo, el it, ¿verdad? No, it isn't, no está, no está lejos. So, yes, the idea here is that you remember, es hacer el review, ¿verdad? De que uh, han respondido muy bien, excelente, cuando es eh, con el auxiliar das, pues eh, la respuesta no va con, con, con el auxiliar, a menos que sea alguna respuesta negativa o positiva en las yes, no questions. But yes, you did it good. Hicieron una oración afirmativa en presente simple usando la alteración del tercera persona singular. Y en la número dos, que pues es una pregunta con el verbo to be, respondemos utilizando el verbo to be o como la hizo eh, la compañera, ¿verdad? Simplemente no. It's, it's near her home. No, it's near her home. So that's okay. Very good. Now let's move to the next one. As we continue reviewing the simple present, we have another paragraph. And this time it's about Mike Miller. Let's read. Uh, let's take turns and read. Uh, who wants to start reading? A volunteer to start reading. The paragraph, alguien puede empezar y se detiene a donde lo desee para que alguien más continúe. Mike Miller. Julie Hola, Sajimilet, thank you so much. Hola. Yes, Julie. Julissa? Sí. Hola. Hola. Okay, you can start, Julissa. I am English teacher and I have a big family. So I have a very busy daily routine. Firms. I I get up every day at six o'clock, get washed and dressed and leave it for work. Be seven thirty. I get to school mm -hmm. by seven thirty. I get to school at eight o'clock. I prepare my lesson and then teach until now. No. Okay. Thank you so much. Very good. So, yes, so as you can see, I get washed. Podría ser que solo se lava la cara o, o se da una media bañada o que se baña, ¿verdad? Pero yes, I get washed and get dressed. Y ya se viste. Okay. And then, a volunteer to continue. The other teachers. Wants to continue reading. Me, teacher. Thank you, Carla. The other teachers and I always eat lunch and talk together in the teacher room. I teach again in the afternoon afternoon, and then I correct my students' homework and test. After I get back home, 
I help my kids with their homework. I have three kids in elementary school. Their names are Matt, John, and Swiss. Then I do some exercise, eat dinner with my family, and watch TV before I go to bed at about 10 o'clock. We love to watch travel show. Finally, I read in bed for a few minutes before I fall asleep. Excellent. Thank you so much for helping us with the reading, Carla. Good job. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any question about this reading? Maybe vocabulary or pronunciation? No questions? No teacher, thank you. No. All right. Okay, so um, I think that we're going to check attendance and then we're going to continue with this exercise. So we're going to read and correct the statements, but let me check the attendance for the first time this night. We have 17 connected, so. Say present as soon as you hear your names. Let's start with Abel Edenilson Salazar. Present teacher. Thank you, Abel. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Seems like she's not here. Okay. Um, Balmore Alexander. Balmore Alexander Marroquín. Seems like he's not here. So let's continue with Carlos Emilio Cotto. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Oh, he's listening. Uh, está conectado, va de camino escuchando nada más ahorita. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you, Cecia. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thank you, Francisco. Hazel Vanessa Menjibar. Present teacher. Thank you, Hazel. Julissa Yamilet Vialta. Present teacher. Thank you so much, Julissa. Carla Daniela Molina. Present. Thanks a bunch, Carla. Carla Ivania Naya. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carla Lorena Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Todo, todo claro. Present. Thank you so much. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Okay. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Present. Thank you. Melissa Esther Orellana. Melissa Esther. Mirna Yanet Ángel. Present teacher. Thank you. Roberto Emilio González. Present teacher. Thank you. Santos Cristina Cerritos. Present. Thank you so much. And Victor Noe Bonilla. 
Present. Thank you so much, Victor. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. I la notamos también. And let me continue sharing my screen. Okay, it's loading. Okay, there you go. Now, um, let's read and correct these statements. So, we're going to write the correct information. For example, in number one, it says, Mike leaves home from work at six o'clock. Is that correct? What is the correct information? Eh. No, esa hora se levanta. Ajá. Uh -huh. So, that is not correct. This is, he Mike. gets up at... Mm -hmm. Mike, Mike leaves home for work at 7.30. Excellent. Okay. That is the correct information. So, you have to write the sentence, the complete sentence. Mike leaves for work at 7.30. You can write them in your notebook and then we will check together.
Y es Víctor está en la presentación de ayer y ya en un momentito le puede mandar lo de hoy que ya pues incluye estas mismas y lo que modifique para seguir con el tema del simple present. Pero sí, estas, estas diapositivas están en la de ayer, en la presentación de ayer. Ready? Finished? Yes, teacher. I think. Okay, we already did the first one. So in the first one, the correct it was Mike leaves home at 7.30. Number two, I volunteer to read the, the sentence, the incorrect and the correct sentences. Both. Volunteer? You can raise your hand. 
Mike has lunch in the teacher's room. Okay, excellent. The incorrect one says Mike has lunch in the cafeteria. But the correct answer is Mike has lunch in the teacher's room. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. Now let's read number three. Volunteer? Volunteer? Yeah, teacher. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Uh, my teaches only teaches only in the morning. The correct my teaches in the morning and in the afternoon. Excellent. Thank you so much for the answer. That is correct. Uh, number four, volunteer. His wife helps their kids with their homework. Mike helps his kids or their kids with the homework. Excellent. Very good. So you can have any of the two, right? Mike helps his kid with the homework or they kid with the homework. Either or. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, number five, volunteer. He watches travel shows until he falls asleep. He reads in the bed for a few minutes until he falls asleep. Excellent. Okay, yes, so that is the correct information. Um, do you have any question yet about this? No questions? Okay, you did an excellent job. And uh, now we're going to move to the page number 25 in your material. Yesterday, um, we not only practiced the simple present, but also the gerunds. We discussed about gerunds. And here in this conversation, we can uh, still see the simple present and also the gerunds. So we're going to be reviewing that again. Um, and here, the same thing, we're going to be describing a colleague's routine at the workplace. So we're going to talk about someone else's routine and we can take some information from the previous readings so that we can have a, a, a more material so that we can have a, a maybe more practice on this one. So let's listen to this conversation. I'm going to read it for you. And you can uh, practice at home. Uh, this is a conversation between Celia and Marcos. Mm, okay. Good morning, Marcos. How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, we schedule some of them tomorrow.
I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual. Checking that personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Okay, do you have any questions or you want to practice it again? Let me know. Do you have any question about pronunciation or vocabulary? Or you want to practice again before we go to the breakout rooms? Teacher, yo tengo una pregunta. Yes, Julissa. Eh, la, pre, la palabra interviewing, eh, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Like that, interviewing. Así como lo, ajá, uh -huh. uh -huh. es como, in, no lo dijo, es como segura, but yes, you have to make sure, si estás segura, es interviewing, interviewing. Okay, thank you, teacher. Excellent. Any other question? Interview. Mm -hmm. Interview. Interviewing. Abel, tell me. Potential. Potential. Excellent. Yes, potential. Any other question? Okay, now, uh, so we will, okay, we will go ahead and create the breakout room so that you can practice this conversation. Remember that this one is on page 25 of your material. And also I'm gonna be sending you the presentation in a few minutes. So I'm going to stop sharing to create the breakout rooms. Uh, I'm going to close this one. Okay, let's join the rooms. Hello, do you need help? Sí, teacher, es que no estaba habilitada la, la opción de, de compartir. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I just did it because I was sharing that estaba, también estaba mandando la, la presentación. <laughs> I'm glad that you... Okay, did. teacher. No problem. Okay. Who start? I am a star. Good morning, okay. Marcos. How is your day going? Very good. I just finished interviewing 
some potential employees, employees, then I have to tell to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, perfect to let some on them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyway, how about you? Just the usual. Checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet's job. ¿Y ahora? Okay. Cambiamos y después que, ajá. Good morning, Marcos. How was is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I think I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, I reschedule some of them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Use the usual checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Okay, finish okay. it. Finish it. Lisa. Hola. Practice. Okay. Good morning, Marcos. How is your day going? Very good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some change in the schedule. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. Yes, but schedule some of the tomorrow. I need to make some call in some minutes. Anyway, how about you? Just the usual checking that the personnel is ready and ordering the inventory. I got ordering the inventory was Janet Joe. Okay. All right, Nisio said. Okay. Yes. Good morning, yes. Marcos. Sorry. Yes, vamos a practicar unas palabras que estuve anotando por ahí. Let's see. The first one is changes. Es como ya está esta G. Changes. Aquí, donde está Marcos, casi la última línea. Changes. Changes. And then schedule. Schedule. And then the verb and this is came. Came. I see. I saw some people in the reception when I came. In the other one. Sí, solo esas tres eran. Good job. You can continue practicing. Okay. Good morning, Marcos. How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing. Hola. Hola, me escucha. Sí. Hola. Hola, me escuchan. No sé si sí, me bien. escuchan. Ah, ok. Sí, sí. ¿Dónde estaba? Ah, pretty good. I just finished in interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some change in the schedule. I see uh, some, some people in the reception when I came. Yes, I rescheduled some of them tomorrow. I need to make some call in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual, checking that the person is ready and ordering the inventory. 
I stopped ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Creo que solamente nosotros estamos o hay alguien más. No, 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 aquí estoy, aquí estoy, es que estoy tendiendo la ropa, perdón. <risa> perdón, ya me exhibieron. <risa> bueno, ah, ¿Por qué? ¿Qué ves aquí todo con quién? Con Abel siempre. Uh, ¿Con quién? No sé. Vaya. No sé. Good morning, Marcos. How is your day going? ¿Con quién? Aquí está, aquí está. Conmigo. Ah, vaya. ¿O con quién? <ríe> Yo no sé. Sí, con usted, Abel. Ah, es que pensé que íbamos a entender como ya pasamos dos días. No, pero de mal así porque ellos ya practicaron los peces. Vaya. <ríe> Empiezo otra vez entonces. Good morning, okay. Marcos. How is your day going? Very good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. Okay. I saw some people in the reception when they came. Yes, I received some and the tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual, checking the checking that the personal is ready and ordering the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet job. Good morning, Marcos. How was it? How is your day going? Pretty good. I just finished interviewing some potential employees. Then I have to talk to the staff about some changes in the schedule. I see. I see some people in the reception when I come. Yes. I will schedule some of them tomorrow. I need to make some calls in some minutes. Anyways, how about you? Just the usual checking that the person is ready and ordering in the inventory. I thought ordering the inventory was Janet's job. Okay. I don't know. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Luisa Hola ¿Lo practicamos de nuevo? Sí Ok
Okay, everybody is back again. So, well, let's see. Now that you have been practicing the conversation, I'm sure that probably you still recall the information. I mean, you can still remember so that we can answer these questions here in the main section. Number one. What kind of job does Marcos have? Como, eh, como recursos humanos, lo, lo que andan buscando nuevos empleos. No. Okay. Probably you can say he is a. He is a recruiter, es un reclutador, o a chart, like human resources. Normalmente es solo ponen a chart, human resources, o he works at the human resources department, he is a recruiter. So yes, that's probably good, very good. Now, what are some of his responsibilities? Do you remember? What are some of his responsibilities? Interviewing uh, some potential employees, mm -hmm. uh, schedule some of them, and make some calls, I think. Yes, he makes some calls, interview potential employees, and reschedule, reschedule uh, meetings or interview when necessary. Ajá, cuando es como necesario, o yo creo que le pedía a la, a la otra persona que las reagendara, ¿verdad? Reschedule. Reschedule some of the interviews, probably when necessary. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, now, how similar are the activities they do with the ones you do? Are they similar? In my case, they aren't. They are not similar to the activities I do. Mm -hmm. What about you? Does anybody of you uh, have the activities like these ones? Mm, or no, no, teacher. No? Nothing similar. No, they are not similar. Okay. Well, now that we are talking about the activities and kinds of jobs, también estamos hablando de tipo de trabajo, like uh, what does um, people do like um, in their regular activities or guessing. También estuvimos como adivinando qué es lo que hacen, what kind of jobs that people have, right? So... That's why I included this extra exercise. Les incluí un ejercicio extra, ya que estamos en este tema buscando qué es lo que hace la gente dependiendo de sus habilidades o actividades. So yes, I have this one. Um, so we can uh, broaden vocabulary también porque um, en los uno a uno a veces me dicen que necesitan vocabulario, práctica, etcétera, y en Y si ven, también tenemos a uh, los germs aquí eh, y lo que hemos estado viendo. So, it's a uh, part of the same content y podemos ayudar un poco más a nuestro vocabulario. So, yes, we have a couple of words here that probably are going to be new for you. The first one is blogger. I'm sure that most of you know what, uh, 
what does a blogger do? And this is like it's Spanish. Les decimos blogger también en Spanish, que son los blogueros, ¿verdad? Um, someone who makes video blogs. Alguien que hace blogs de videos. Um, uh, los blogs son como, no son como cualquier, eh, any youtuber que le decimos, right? O, or influencers. So, so what's a blogger? Es como más específico, ¿verdad? What do you know about bloggers? Nobody? I think uh, that uh, there are a difference between a YouTuber and a blogger. Uh -huh. Because a YouTuber uh, usually uh, make videos about um, games, like uh, gameplay, so opinion of a game, a rarity situation, but the blogger uh, make a video of uh, the trips that they um, make mm -hmm. or yes. make up, sometimes make up on other topics. Excellent. Yes, very good. That is correct. Do we have bloggers in El Salvador? Yes. For example? Tio uh, Frank. Tio Frank. <laughs> yes, he's one of, I think he's the most famous blogger, Salvadorian blogger. He visits places, he talks about places and experience and the prices also. Um, he gives his opinion, right, about the places that he visits. Something could be hotels, restaurants, etc. Yes, very good. So that's a blogger. Thank you so much for your participation. Next, career advisor. Career advisor. Can we repeat? Career advisor. Or they are also called career advisor. If it is um. Yes, it's pretty much the same, right? Career advisor or careers advisor that can be in plural or singular, either or. So, but it's someone who gives help and advice uh, to people looking for a job, okay? Uh, sometimes in some, uh, I think in some universities, they have like career advisors. Okay, uh, they give like an induction before people can um, um, join a specific career. Is that clear what a career advisor is? Well, I guess that's a yes. Now, juggling, juggling. Have you heard that word, juggling? Juggling, what is that? Juggling is throwing and catching two or more objects, usually balls in the air. Uh, and, and this is a, a repetitive action. You can see a sample of juggling. We have some of them in the traffic lights. When you're in a traffic light and it's in red, there are some people juggling, yes? ¿Qué sería? Un malabarista, digámoslo así. Malabarista, son personas que tiran y cachan dos o más objetos, usualmente son eh, bolas. También a veces hay gente que lo hace con pines de boliche. Hay otros un poco más atrevidos y lo hacen con corvos. Yes. Juggling, so esos son los uh, malabaristas o malabares, yes. Uh, ukulele is a small musical instrument like a guitar um, with four strings, de cuatro cuerdas, es como una guitarra chiquita de cuatro cuerdas, es el ukulele. Now, to keep fit is to stay healthy and strong by doing physical exercises, es mantenerse en forma, so I think that was not really difficult. Okay, so uh, we have this lady, 
it says, let's read the article that she wrote. It says, my name's Sunny. I'm from China. Hi. Anybody else would like to continue reading? ¿Alguien más que quiera continuar leyendo? So, I'm looking for a job. The problem is, I don't know what to do. I tried looking everywhere. So, my career advisor told me to think about what I like doing. Thank you so much, Victor. Advisor. Okay, my career advisor told me to think about what I like doing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, anybody else would like to continue reading here? I love dancing. I love dancing. Me. I really, really, really like traveling. I enjoy singing, singing. and singing, sorry. Yeah. Performing, I guess that's why I decided to study drama, drama at university. Excellent. Thank you so much, Francisco. Thank you for your help. Escuché a alguien más que quería continuar. Puede seguir aquí, keeping fit. Hello. Yo, teacher. Okay, Janet, thank you. Keeping fit, I always try to keep fit. So I have hate. This hate. I hate. I with me. Swimming. I hate swimming. Swimming. I suppose I just have. Have hate, hate to be very bored. 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 I even try tried to learn to juggling, juggling, and um, ukulele. Come, ukulele, <laughs> ukulele, ukulele. <laughs> Bye. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for helping us. Janet, in the last paragraph, I hope, volunteer, I hope, Julissa, thank you so much. I hope to be famous, famous one day, famous one day, but for now, I need a job. What do you guys think I should do mesh mm, it's no second sé pronounce message. message me message me message me okay excellent you said thank you so much um is there any question about the vocabulary tienen alguna pregunta con el vocabulario algo otra palabra nueva que ha surgido por ahí esa que dice ukelele qué significa El ukelele es un instrumento como una guitarra chiquita y nada más tiene cuatro cuerdas. Es un instrumento musical. Any other question? No, teacher. No, thank you. Okay. All right. So, according to the uh, uh, the things that that she can do, her abilities, um, her likes and dislikes. What do you think that would be the perfect job for her, for Sunny? What would be the perfect job for Sunny? What do you think?
Travel agent. Mm, she could work in a travel agency. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other idea? Mm, if she studies drama, maybe can be an actress. Yes, perfect. Yes, maybe she could study drama or to be an actress. Yes, because actors usually travel. They some some or most of them sing and perform. Mm -hmm. And she has to study drama. Mm -hmm. And she wants to be famous. It says, I hope to be famous. So, yes, probably. Yeah. Uh huh. That's why I think I could be. Could yes. Be. Yes, could be a good. Uh, I think it's the best well, for her. The best option is to be an actress, to look for a job as an actress or a performer. Maybe uh, start as a stunt. Podría empezar como un doble, like a stunt. <laughs> Okay, so very good. Thank you so much for your participation. And thank you so much for reading. Um, I have seen that you're participating more. Están participando más, lo, lo cual es, es bueno. Crean que de verdad eh, que participen, que lean. Eh, eh, da bastante satisfacción porque están practicando, están mejorando día a día y de eso se trata. No es porque... Uh, Ah, bueno, estoy como que aburrida, entonces le voy a meter más material a esto, ¿no? So, eh, eh, de verdad, me siento muy bien, Ter, que están aprovechando eh, todo lo que estamos incluyendo aquí, el material, la combinación que estamos haciendo para que ustedes tengan un poco, pues, más de práctica. Y esto es de ejercitar siempre eh, que speaking, listening, estar leyendo para que vayamos eh, destrabando, ¿no? ¿Verdad? Eso nos ayuda a irnos destrabando a, a estar más fluidos. So, yes, good that you are um, taking the chance to participate. So, thank you so much. It's going to help you a lot. Now, okay, checking here, we have to well, we continue about some common tasks of personnel in a restaurant. And it and the question, how different or similar are with yours? Mm, let's see. Meet the head chef to review the weekly menu. Call a marketing company about promotional souvenirs. Order the inventory. Talk to staff about changes in the schedule, interview potential employees, or check the weekly schedule. Um, are they are these activities similar to the ones that you do? Are these similar to yours? Mm, yes, I ordered the inventory too. Oh, you order the inventory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other? Mm, only that, I think. Only that. Okay. Good. Thank one. you so much. Any other? And somebody else in the class has similar activities to this one? Or the, uh, how different are they? Not teacher. Hmm. Is most of them are related to management, right? So most most of the activities that we see here are um, uh, activities that are, are related to management. And uh, well, this one that has the inventory thing is the one that is just the one that is similar to Carla's activities, right? Okay, and also the yes, the the kitchen personal maybe do this kind of activities. But what about you? 
Do you work in the office? What are your activities? What do you do in a regular day? Any volunteer? No volunteers? For what, teacher? Uh, talk about your activities. What do you regular, do in a regular day of, at your workplace? Um, I'm a salesperson, so I um, sell fabrics. Also, um, I supply my furniture. I clean my furniture too and the sales room at uh, the beginning of the day and at the ending too. And I talk to the customers, the current clients that I'm uh, assisting. Assist? Oh, you, you assist? Usted les ayuda a los clientes. Yeah, okay. some clients that, that, help, that need help, and, ¿cómo se dice? De vez en cuando, eventualmente. Ah, uh, from time to time, en internet, online. Yeah. Mm, by the cell phone. I uh have -huh, some clients that they want to be assisted. By me. <laughs> okay, so you can assist the customer via a text messages? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have loyal clients. <laughs> Loyalty clients. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's nice to hear that. So it's it's um I think it's very entertaining. Yeah. Nothing boring. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So nice. Very good. Thank you so much, Carla, for sharing with us. Anybody else? Okay. Well, let's continue here. It says, um, let's, uh, in this exercise that we have here, it is on page 26. We are supposed to write a five-line paragraph about the task that your boss or colleague does in our workplace. But we already did an exercise similar to this one. Ya hicimos un ejercicio similar a este en las clases previas. Uh, so we're going to move on to this thing that is, uh, I want for you to review uh, how to tell the time in English. Since, uh, yes, we are talking about schedule activities. So, Let's see. A veces eh, estamos a, eh, con esto y quería saber cómo se sienten eh, con el tema de cómo decir la hora. Porque en algunas ocasiones he visto que como que nos trabamos al momento de decir la hora. Eh, básicamente hay dos formas de, de decirlo, ¿verdad? Esta es la que a veces quizás no, no, nos... Eh, ese, no, nos hace como una, porque sé que a veces intentan decirlo así y a veces se van por la otra forma que es la, la misma que como lo hacemos en español, pero pues, pues es bueno saber las dos formas. Así es que por eso les puse esta imagen aquí para hacer como un pequeño review de cómo se maneja la hora eh, al decirla en inglés de esta forma, porque son dos formas, pero creo que esta es la más complicada. La otra no, porque es igual que en español, ¿verdad? Entonces, de esta forma, eh, aquí está la ilustración. Eh, tenemos acá en caso que este es un reloj. Y está dividido en dos sesiones, si se fijan. Esta sesión amarilla que dice past y la sesión verdecita que dice to. Esto es porque, digamos, aquí son las 12, ¿verdad? Aquí estaría el número 12. Aquí estaría en hora, sería la una acá, acá serían las dos, acá serían las tres, etc. Lo que acá tengo en letras son los minutos que representan estos números. Por ejemplo, si digamos fuera la, la una y cinco, estarían las dos manecillas acá, ¿verdad? Entonces, si es la una y cinco, en este formato de hora se mencionan primero los minutos que han pasado 
de la hora. Entonces diría five past one. Entonces tendría que decir como para decir la una y cinco en este formato de hora sería primero los minutos que son cinco. Five past y después la hora. One. Eh, si digamos que son las um, dos, dos y quince. Entonces yo diría primero los quince o el cuarto de hora, ¿verdad? Quince o quarter. It's quarter past two. Eso sería para decir son las dos y cuarto. Quarter past two. Ok. Ahora, digamos que son las tres y veinte. ¿Cómo diría que son las tres y veinte? Excellent. Twenty past three. Así sería para decir que son las tres y veinte. Twenty past three. Ok. Si quiero decir que son las cinco y veinticinco. Twenty five past five. Excellent. That is correct. Thank you. Twenty five past five. Uh -huh. Ahora, cuando es media hora. Cuando es la media hora se dice half past. Por ejemplo, si fueran las uh, seis y media, seis y media sería. Half six past six. Half past six. Uh -huh. Seis y media sería half past six. Luego, si ya las manecillas de los minutos pasaron de acá para acá, ya no usamos el pas, sino que usamos el to, ¿ok? Es como decir para, ¿ok? Como cuando decimos, ah, faltan 20 para las 8, ¿cómo diríamos 20 para las 8 ya de acá? Twenty to eight, ajá, uh -huh. excelente. Twenty to eight. Uh, si me faltan diez para las nueve, digamos, diez para las nueve sería ten to nine. Ten to nine, ajá. Uh -huh. Y solamente cuando la hora está redonda, sin minutos que se pasen, cuando decimos en punto, es que se usa la expresión o'clock. Puede ser que sea one o'clock. Eh, five o'clock, o aquí estaría las siete, ¿verdad? Seven o'clock, siempre que sea en punto se dice o'clock, así, sharp, o'clock. Eh, otra cosa, bueno, cuando estamos de, alguien nos pregunta la hora, ¿qué hora es? What time is it? Entonces contestamos usando it's, ¿verdad? It's. Y decimos la hora, por ejemplo, what time is it? Ahorita, ¿qué hora es? It's, faltan, no, oh, son las nueve y media. Entonces decimos it's nine thirty. Podemos decir it's o podemos decir primero con este formato. Half, half past nine. Past nine. Ok, este sería usando este formato. Diríamos, it's half past nine. Son eh, 30 pasado de las nueve, ¿verdad? Y si lo hacemos como nosotros decimos en el sábado, nueve y media, sería nine thirty. It's nine thirty. It's nine thirty. Cuando estamos diciendo la hora, eh, usamos it's, ¿verdad? Pero cuando estamos hablando de algún evento, como que diga a qué horas tenemos la meeting. So we have a meeting. Por ejemplo, tenemos una reunión uh, 20 a las 4. Usando este formato que tienen en, el, en la pantalla. Si tenemos una meeting 20 para las 4, ¿cómo lo diríamos? We have a meeting. Tenemos que usar la proposición at. at. 
Ajá, no decimos it's. El it's es solo cuando estamos diciendo qué hora es, cuando nos preguntan qué hora es. Pero si vamos a mencionar a qué hora sucede un evento, por ejemplo, a qué hora empieza la clase. The class starts at 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. At, ahí usamos at para decir a qué hora sucede algo. Eh, ¿A qué horas tomo el bus en la mañana? I take the bus at, y ya decimos a qué hora tomamos el bus. ¿Ok? Entonces, pueden usar este formato para decir la hora o el que es igual que en español, ¿verdad? En el que primero mencionamos la hora y después los minutos. ¿Any question here? ¿Tenemos questions, preguntas? No questions. No teacher. No teacher, thank you. Okay. Now, let's continue here about the schedules. Eh, teníamos un ejercicio de hablar de los schedules de nuestro jefe, de nuestro... But um, I think eh, si vemos aquí a las personas y sus horarios, vamos a tener una mejor imagen, ¿verdad? Porque si les empiezo a hablar de las actividades de mi jefa, um, de mis compañeros de trabajo, es como que no sé quiénes son, no los conozco. So it's like, no. So, entonces estamos con estas tres para que tengamos ya una imagen más clara de quiénes estamos hablando y sus actividades. So, yes. Uh, they are talking about schedule, and this is like a reporter um, interviewing students. And um, so it says, what's your schedule like? Look at the pictures and the labels. Who gets up early and who gets up late? So the labels, we have the first lady here. Her name is Britton Davis. She is a college student. Then we have Justin Reed. He is a city tour guide. And we have Maya Chu. She is a rock musician. And we have, uh, well, these three guys are being interviewed by Mike. Mike is the interviewer. Mike is la persona que los entrevista. Okay, so let's see. It says a student reporter. Mike Stark talks to people on the street about their schedule. So let's begin here with Mike and Brittany. Uh, let's see, I need two volunteers. Two volunteers to um, role play this conversation. The first one. Two volunteers, dos volunteers para hacer esta primera conversación, la de Mike y Brittany. What do you schedule like? Ok, tenemos a Francisco. Francisco sería Mike and a volunteer to pay Brittany. Victor. Ok, we have Francisco and Victor. Francisco, you can start. What do you schedule, schedule like? My classes start at 8 a.m. So I get up at 7 and take the bus to school. When do your class end? They end at noon. Then I have a job at the light. Library, uh -huh. So, when do you study? My only time to study is in the evening from 8 until minute. Midnight. Okay, Midnight. excellent. Thank you so much for participating. And Let's read the second one. Mike and Justin. Vi que Janet tenía la manita por ahí. Eh, Janet puede ser Mike. And who wants to play Justin? Carla Daniela, thank you. What's your schedule like? 
I get up and eh, ay, espérame, no miro. Ay, sí. Mm, 15. Yes. Uh -huh. So you can say 6.15 or a quarter past 6. Um, but I get up at a quarter past 6 a.m. And I start to work I start work at nine o'clock. And what do you do before work? I go for a run at six thirty a.m. and uh, and then I have breakfast at seven o'clock. And after work, um, I finished at six p.m. and I have dinner downtown. Did you work there every day? No, I work on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Excellent. Thank you so much for participating. Ya ven que ahora bien fácil es sale schedule. <laughs> Excellent. That is uh, when you realize that this is about practice. Excellent. Thank you so much, ladies. Now, Mike and Maya, vi creo que Yulisa, Yulisa. You can be Mike. Yes, teacher. Okay, you can be Mike. And who wants to play Maya? I volunteer to help you, Lisa. Me, teacher. Okay, thank you, Carla Ivania. Thank you. What's your schedule like? Well, I work at night. I go to work at 10 p.m. and I play until 3 a.m. What do you do after work? I have dinner at 3, 3 or 4. Then I take a taxi home. What time do you go to bed? I go to bed at five in the morning. Okay, so yes, correct. Any question about vocabulary? Thank you so much for your participation. Very well done. I think it's pretty easy, right? The vocabulary is pretty easy to understand. And yes, we have uh, another exercise related to this. Tenemos otro ejercicio después relacionado con esta lectura, pero vamos a parar un momentito mientras chequeamos asistencia. Ya es hora de hacer nuestro segundo control. So, I just let's say present when you hear your names. And give me one second. Voy a conectar esto antes que se me quede sin batería porque... Se me va a cortar la video conference and I don't want that to happen. Okay, it's done. Okay, let's see. Let's check your attendance. Okay, uh, Bella de Nilsson. Present. Thank you so much. Let's see, next person on this is Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Palmore Alexander. Present teacher, present teacher. Thank you so much, Palmore. Carlos Emilio Coto. Carlos Emilio Coto. It's like not here today. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Cecilia Noemí Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa Mengíbar. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yes, I hear you. Yulisa Yamilet. Present, teacher. Thank you, Yulisa. Carla Daniela. Present. Thank you, Carla. Carla Ivania. Present, teacher. Thank you so much. Carla Lorena. Present, teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Mario Ernesto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Melissa Esther. Present teacher. Thank you. Mirna Yanet. Present teacher. Thank you. Roberto Emilio. Present teacher. <clears throat> Thank you. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you so much. And Victor Noé. Present. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now it says share screen. And I have a message here. Marilyn. Okay, Marilyn. Ahí la tomamos ya en cuenta. En el conteo. Okay. Let me go back to the um presentation. Um sharing the screen with you again. So um we have this uh, information about these three people in the pictures. So what we are going to do is to complete this based on the article. Uh, so we're going to get in groups and we're going to read the article again and number the activities in each person schedule from one to five. So for example, the first one is already done for us in uh, Brittany Davis. Number one, she gets up. It says number one here. My classes start at 8 a.m. So I get up at 7 a. So this is the first thing that she does, right? Is to get up at 7. So that is the number one. And then we have she studies, she works, she takes the bus, she goes to class. So you have to number the activities in order from one to five and you will need to get back to the um to this slide so that you can check in groups is this clear yes yes teacher okay uh you can uh do it in your notebook pueden ir tomando notas o pueden modificar ahí en grupos si comparten pantalla y luego pues eh, chequeamos Juntos en la sección principal. So I'm going to stop sharing for a while and we'll create the breakout rooms so that you can um, share your um, answers so you can discuss the answers as well. Okay, let's work on that.
Okay, uh, just the tell again. Okay. Uh, did you finish the exercise? No. No? Yeah. Okay, nobody. Almost. Can... Almost. <laughs> yes. Okay, and the rest of you? Nobody finished? Okay. No, faltó, no faltó el párrafo de Maya. Oh, you're missing one Me part. too. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try and see. Okay, let me share this and make it bigger. Okay, uh, let's check your answers for number, well, what would Brittany Davis? Uh, so we have for letter A, she goes to class. What number of activity is that one? ¿Qué número le pusieron? Uh, she goes to class. Three. Three. Yes, Three. she's correct. Three. She takes the bus. Two. Two, excellent. She works. Five. Oh, no. Four. Four, correct. Four. And she studies? Five. Five. And she gets up. It was the number one. Okay, so you should have it like this. Excellent. Justin, read. He has breakfast. What number of activities that one? Three. Three. Yes, correct. It's three. B, he starts work. Four. 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 Excellent. He eats dinner. Five. Five. Excellent. Five. Um he gets up. One. One. Excellent. And he goes for a run. Two. Two. Excellent. There you have them correct. And now about Maya. Uh, ¿Las empezaron a Maya o no? Nada, nada. No. Yes. Hmm? Yes. I wrote. Estoy ayudando a Maya. Yes. 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 Three, she has dinner. She has dinner would be uh, three. Yo lo había visto, yo lo había puesto four. Ajá, es como ella trabaja de noche, madrugada, Es que sí está bien confuso. Ajá, como es música, ella va, a, se duerme. Su inicio es nuestro final. La, ajá. Yes, that is why. So, uh, A is number three. B, she finishes work. Is two. Uh, yes, she yes. goes to bed. Five. It's five. <laughs> she goes to work. That one is one. 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 And she goes home. It's two. four. Now, the Maya les tenía que quedar three, two, five, one, and four. And with this, we finished today's session. I hope that you have liked it, enjoyed, and learned a lot. And uh, for today, 101 is for Julissa Yamilet. If you can stay for a couple of minutes, that would be great. And the rest of you, thank you for joining, and see you tomorrow. See you. Have a good well. See you tomorrow. See you. Good night. See you. Bye. Good night. Good night, sleep well. Hi, Julissa. Hi, teacher. Hi, thank you for staying. You want it in English or Spanish? Spanish, teacher. Español. Please. <laughs> no.
No problem. Ok, ¿cómo va? ¿Cómo se ha sentido en las clases? Bien, eh, bien, la verdad que voy entendiendo un poco. Muy bien. ¿Algún tema que sienta dificultad o, o, o que quisiera eh, algún repaso de algún tema de los que hemos visto? Eh, lo que sí me ha costado entender, teacher, es lo de los gerundios. La de los gerundios. Ok. Eh, Es como, no. uh -huh. o sea, no era el tema en sí, ¿verdad? Pero sí como para como saber exactamente dónde se utilizan. Mm, sí, ese tema, eh, le comento, es un tema pues eh, bastante, eh, lo van a volver a ver porque es bien avanzado. Normalmente no... Pues por, por lo que es el programa se está viendo ahorita, pero pues sí. Eh, los gerundios eh, sí comprende, Yurisa, que no es un... Como normalmente los gerundios, el primer vez que nosotros los vemos es cuando estamos haciendo el presente continuo, ¿verdad? De decir, we're talking, we are learning, ¿qué estamos haciendo en el momento? Entonces interpretamos que es como una acción en progreso, aprendiendo... Estoy comiendo, estoy cocinando, estoy escuchando todo lo que estoy haciendo en el momento, ¿verdad? Pero Okay. eso es, es para cuando estamos haciendo tiempo continuo, ya sea presente continuo, el pasado continuo, etc. Pero un gerund es algo diferente, es simplemente con el, el, el noun agregándole la ing word, el ing, solo agregando el ing. Y esto no tiene el significado o la interpretación que nosotros le damos de decir es un continuo, ¿verdad? Es como si yo le dijera, eh... ok. En este caso, yo estoy iniciando esta oración con un verbo, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando yo inicio una oración con un verbo, este verbo tiene que llevar el ing word, tiene que llevar ing. Y no, no necesariamente es comiendo, no es lo que está sucediendo en el momento. Simplemente la regla dice que si yo voy a iniciar una oración Con un verbo, este va a llevar el, la, la palabra ing. Eso. Siempre que usted va a empezar una oración con un verbo, lo va a hacer en gerundio. En ese momento va a empezar. Eh, porque me decía que no, no entiende cuándo lo va a usar, ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces, si voy a iniciar eh, la oración con una acción, este tiene que ir en gerundio. Como por ejemplo eso. Que yo le diga, comer una manzana a diario te va a mantener lejos del doctor, te va a mantener sana. Entonces digo, eating an apple a day keeps you away from doctors. Eh, si hacemos otro ejemplo, por ejemplo, eh, yo le podría decir, uh, asistir a clases es tu responsabilidad. Entonces, asistir eh, de attendance, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Attending, ese sería el... el, el Attending to classes is your responsibility. Okay. Attending to classes is your responsibility. Siempre que yo voy a empezar una oración con un verbo, este va a tomar la ing word. Va a tomar el ing. Y otra ocasión en la que tomamos un gen es cuando tengo... Eh, dos verbos en el mismo tiempo, en, en, en la misma oración. Por ejemplo, esto se ve más que todo cuando estamos hablando de verbos que eh, tienen algún, eh, involucran algún sentimiento como like, que lo estábamos viendo ahí, hate, también lo vimos en la lectura, eh, y hay dos formas de hacerlo, pero, o sea, ahorita nos decimos el germ. Por ejemplo, yo le puedo decir, I hate, eh, ¿qué odio? Si después de este verbo, que es odiar, 
yo voy a utilizar otro verbo, eh, se va a ver raro que, eh, que yo lo ponga. Por, Por ejemplo, ejemplo, ajá, eso le iba a decir, yo odio comer eh, pizza o algo así. Ajá, entonces I iría aquí. eating. Uh -huh. Ok. Yes, I hate eating pizza. Odio comer pizza. Ok, entonces el segundo verbo tiene que tomar el ing form. Porque si no decir yo odiar comer. Entonces, por eso es que la regla gramatical me dice que tiene que tomar la ing word. Y a veces es que lo ven así. I hate to eat. El to está haciendo un infinitivo para separar esos dos verbos y que no nos escuchemos como cavernícolas, ¿verdad? Pero perfectamente lo puede hacer con un germ también. I hate eating pizza. Okay. Ahora sí ya me quedó más claro, Y teacher. la última, Julissa, la última que, en que usted va a ver un gerund es cuando después de una preposición haya un verbo. Una preposición como las que vimos ayer, por ejemplo, for, about, in. Por ejemplo, usted está interesada en, so you can say I am. I interested, usted está interesada en aprender un segundo idioma. Entonces, como aquí tengo la preposición in y quiero poner el verbo aprender, ese verbo va a llevar la ing word. I interested in learning a second language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A second language. Siempre que después de una preposición, ya sea in, at, about, on, um, for, of, siempre que después de una preposición haya un verbo, este va a llevar el germ form. Esas son las tres principales. Ok, teacher. Sí, mm. ahora ya, ya, ya estamos claros. Excelente. ¿Algo más en lo que le pueda ayudar, Julissa? No, creo que por el momento estamos bien, dicha. Ok, entonces siempre, siempre, siempre usted puede preguntar. No es que solo en la sesión uno a uno usted tenía el chance de preguntar o aclarar dudas. Siempre lo puede hacer. Eh, no se quede con dudas. Cualquier cosa, pregunte ya sea por el chat o, o durante la clase. Y pues podemos eh, solventar para que no vayan con dudas a los niveles que vienen adelante. Ok, teacher, thank you. Ok, ¿algo más que quiera agregar o preguntar antes que terminemos la sesión? No, uh, por el momento no. Cualquier otra duda, pues ahí la voy a ir haciendo conforme las clases. Awesome, terrific. Thank you so much. Ok, Julissa, so um, la dejo ir a descansar and see you tomorrow. See you, teacher. Thank you. See you. Thank you for your time. Bye.